So I'm John Outen from the Long Dash Group. Uh, we're a group of writers who've been meeting for 20 years, workshopping uh, poems, doing events. Uh, in April, we were supposed to do one for National Poetry Month, whose theme was the world of poetry. We were going to do a live reading in a downtown bar, but unfortunately, due to the pandemic, that was postponed. So we're doing this virtual reading as a chance to share our work with us, and we'd like to thank the League of Canadian Poets and the Canada Council for sponsoring this reading. So uh, I'm going to begin. I'm reading a few poems about people who make up much of our world and one poem about nature, which is a larger world within which we all live. Washed up. Unnoticed in the street, he passed here in full ritual. Sirens, lights beating like frantic hearts, firefighters, EMS, officers in shades, blue nitrile gloves. The canoe storage guy retrieving his big boat hook. His still form gently lifted, was blanketed on the gurney, face paused and grave as a carved pharaoh's. The crowd of joggers, mums, and idle walkers traded news. I saw him on the boardwalk an hour ago. I'm sure it was the same man. People said he was in their yard. No one asked who or how he ended here in the small waves where Silver Birch Avenue ends. Afterwards, a copter poised slice vectors in hot, wet air, glass eye fixed on where someone was and then wasn't. Uh, these next two poems are about uh, my father and my grandfather. Uh, so the first poem, Arthur, is about my grandfather. Commoner named for a myth king, he sang in choir Sundays, worked in silence weekdays. His hardwood handled heavy planes shaping shedding aromatic curls to the ground, handsaw biting a perfect mortise cut. How quiet work was for my carpenter grandfather, only the welcome bang of hammer on nail, a punctuation to the meditative art. He could read knots and imagine the branch that once sprouted there, frame up reality to stand a century. And the third poem I'm going to read is called Jack, and it's after my father. My science dad lectured half an hour when I asked him about bees. He was briefer about human genetics. They could get embarrassing. On maple leaves, he was succinct. The colors are always there, but you don't see them until trees stop making chlorophyll. Green masks the reds and yellows. I remember this in spring when leaves blush their hottest greens in summer when they tan to a dull gloss. Fall, fall colors are there, hidden. My father has faded, but not his lesson. And my final poem is uh, also about the area I live in, the beach. Uh, and I saw a rare egret down there with all the gulls and cormorants and Canada geese um, just feeding on the fish. Egret visits the beach. A slender S of white, hieroglyph for grace, you hunt, slow stepping and halt. Your fencer's thrust takes the silver offering, swallows it squirming along a sinuous neck, a poet's brain suddenly seizing the right noun to make a line dance, then flies, a snake granted its wish for snowy wings, a spear of snow, late August heat, shimmering water. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Great. Hello everyone. I'm Mary Lou Suter Hines, another member of the Long Dash group. I'm very pleased to be part of today's reading. Poetry for me, um, by way of the theme, is a way of framing, if you like, a way of understanding the world, of making sense of love, loss, and life's dilemmas. And so today I'll read a short selection from Any Waking Morning, my newest collection of poetry, published in the spring of 2019 by Inanna Publications. I'll start with a poem titled Unmasked. And in a way, I guess you could say that it speaks to what happens when words absolutely fail. Unmasked. On days beyond the reach of words, she conjures trees, 
inner root infusions, an elm, palm, and oak. Nodes and leaf scars, bark applied to bowl, all sacrament and crucible. No sheathing base, no canopy or crown, layers exposed, field from woodland, stem from core, canticles and insensations, bright grains laid upon hot coals, a fire's fragrant energy summoning the smallest sculpted word. The next poem is entitled Because, and I guess you could say that it's an attempt to answer, perhaps, the universal question, why? Because, because words, a mother's tongue, unleaven insinuations, wafer thin, desires, muffled womb, because time slips from its moorings, because grief, because prayer, promise of a canvas primed, discernment's double locked doors, a tree's lost leaves. The advent of coincidence, affirmation, melting snow, a crystal egg. Because light comes full circle, because night, because there is no other, just brushstrokes, benediction, an angel's broken gravity, where no tears fall. This next poem, Point of Unraveling, is my take on the painting Gossip by G. A. Reed. Point of Unraveling. Alone save for the artist, the spinning wheel between them still, rooms raw umber, hint of embers, solitary candle, clouds upright blur, in windows light, a tree. Perhaps it was the force of Newton's second law that kept them there, her downward gaze intense and focused, arm akimbo. She leans into the wheel while you look upward, a ball of yarn coiled careless at your feet, the spindle slack, a single axis tautly stretched. What words might frame those tightly buttoned dreams Aprons, iceberg blue, the jaunty tip of shoe beneath your skirt, folds, soft, shadowing. How long could such a gaze be held till more begins to unravel as angles shift, yielding their dynamic ambiguities? And I'll close with the last poem in the collection, it's entitled Deep Water Benediction, and there are a couple of references to Jamaica that I'll just clarify. Rockford Baths is a mineral spa on Kingston Harbor. The flat bridge is one of Jamaica's oldest bridges built by the Spaniards during their occupation. And the Rio Cobre and Martha Bray are both other rivers in Jamaica. Deep water benediction. Finally, no coral breath or sand, no sun, just water's marbled urgency, a body's longing still deep enough for drowning. Alternate days, she seeks out words, gathers them close beneath her ribs, slips into page adrift in memory's wash. Sundays at the Rockforth Springs, Flatbridge spanning Rio Cobra's gorge, the Martha Bray. Each night, mercy's prayer, 
absolutions, ashes, salt, and wine, those crystal cloud insinuations, blue holes, pools, and waterfalls, where a river goes to ground. From the doorway, both rooms, the cats curled into dreams, crimson pillows, silent waiting, waters, lustrous language, like skin. Thanks so much. Okay, I'm Ilana Wolf, and I'm going to read three poems from my new collection, Swoon, published by Guernica Editions and virtually launched in this past June in the pandemic. So our topic is the world of poetry, which of course includes the poet, and the poet with a capital P whose life and work has influenced me greatly is Franz Kafka, the Prague-born German-Jewish author who's left his indelible mark on the 20th and the 20th century now too. This uh, first poem is uh, titled Traffic and it references Kafka's breakthrough story, The Judgment. Traffic. Birthed into the middle of things, it's up to us to redirect. We of the fraught, begotten bodies, pixelated thoughts, all in some way bent to be connected. The smashed raccoon on Bluer was my cocky second cousin. The woman in the badger mask, my other. She owns me like a bit of breath. Put your head to mine and let us feel less indirect. This won't be disgraceful and we crave it. When Kafka leapt to the river in the judgment, I was on the bridge. He changed his name for the story, but it was him. I was in the omnibus passing with the traffic. I saw the body in the water sinking. Even in this minor role without a name or face, I feel the disappearance still, the deep seat always waiting, need that brings a being into reach. So that's, uh, that story, The Judgment, is a kind of dying into life poem. I should say a dying into life story. So I've been tracking Kafka for some years now, retracing the places where he lived and worked and passed time. And uh, this poem is about a visit to a neighborhood in Prague where he volunteered in the afternoons at a market garden to offset the time in his office job. Uh, he worked for a, a semi-governmental firm as an insurance lawyer. So the gardening was a, a health activity. This piece is titled, So Good at This. I've wished to step into the black atoms of mid-air, be ambient and present to a figure. My shoulders twitch like liftoff at Benetska and Maslupi streets. A crow alights, indicative, and drops beyond a wall. This way lies a hospital, a pharmacy, and recall. That way to a room where clerks were stripped and flogged with rods. Pieces filter through the trees like feathers to a well. Can you tell by the pen I seek a yard and gardener in Musle? A tall man sheds his head, hat and jacket, gets down dirty, déclassé, darker here than he was for a friable while, soil beneath his nails, dark man to a bird on a roof, draw him as he's gone, so good at this he doesn't die, but consecrates in creatures 
storyline and dream, the far lands of confabulation, literature, and illness. And um, I'm going to close with this third piece. And this piece was actually written for a painting titled Sculpture Garden in Khotkovni Park by Barbara Fife, a long-standing studio artist of the Women's Art Association of Canada. And uh, I presented this piece at a collaboration celebrating National Poetry Month in 2018. And uh, here the world of poetry and the world of, of makers overlaps, visual artists and artists of the written world, written word, so close to world. This piece is titled, What More Is There to Say of Hearts? I saw the man in the dream that fans on a bench in the park consuming fruit, fletcherizing it, masticating it slowly for his health. He rose from the bench, this act in the past, converted the dream scene to red, probably through the homophone, rose, though maybe through the fruit he liked to eat. That color in Khotkovni Park in a garden of sculpted hearts. What more is there to say of hearts that hasn't been said already by the Romantics and more baroquely? Maybe that these hearts in the park were captured in paint by an artist I like, that she and Franz and I have strolled this park in Prague, though he the most, and none of us together of dreams that they conflate and animate, of red that it's the color across from green. Thank you. My name is Merle Noodleman. I'm a poet, educator, and lawyer, and the author of five collections of poetry the most recent being The Seeker Ascends, published by Anano Publications in 2018. I have three poems I'm going to share with you, and I'm going to begin with a poem that is from my newest manuscript and entitled Destiny's Bouquet. Although this poem was written for my son well before the pandemic, the sentiments expressed in this poem are very relevant now. Prayer for wholeness. Pestilence invades the air. Merciful one, I pray for the recovery of all who are sick or in pain currently. I harmonize my prayers with the voices of those who love them. Grant us the choice to find renewed drive and courage to rejoice in glimpsed patches of glowing green. Strengthen the healing powers that reside within beings for the soul's good. Guide the hands of those entrusted with our care for we're tied to this fevered microcosm. Have mercy on the ill and graciously restore our spirit, our vigor. Grant us more, a complete recovery, a speedy cure for all on the downward slide. We stand at the edge of a vast cliff. Help us endure suffering and dissolve unease. Renew within these vessels the salve of peace. Uluru is an enormous oval red sandstone rock 
that rises above the surrounding barren desert plain in Australia's outback. Most of Uluru is considered a sacred site by the local Anangu tribe, who are its traditional land owners. Rock art is found all around Uluru. The land that wanders to the end of the world. At Uluru, petroglyphs lament, soft syllables sliding down sandstone cliffs and fissures through paw-shaped caves to ochre images, sacred symbols and angu elders read to the young. Hunt, rituals, ancestral encounters, the history of place, creation's forces, water serpent Wiawi traveling the land, making water holes and streams in journeys spinning through dream time. Rust red monolith ascends from the desert, the place that wanders to the edge of the world. Spirit descendants, Earth's protectors, they watch, listen, hear the refrain shuddering from the sea. While driving from Toronto to cottage country, we were lucky to see soaring hawks repeatedly. Then, as we neared our destination, a deer stepped out of the woods. We paused and savored these special moments. Guardians of Earth. We follow the blue threading north, out of the city, its static and stink of fear Scout the day, burnished peony replacing doubt. Clarity lights the open road. Bricks and cement turn into loamy furrows, shooting verdant along the Holland Marsh. Discontent pushes us past touristy stops at Barrie. Urgency pulls us towards the granite shield her silky lakes. Tranquility spreads benignly. The navy ribbon twists through rocky hills and we talk about what was and is, what thrills, as miles come and go, as each minute pills until our gaze lifts upward to the red-tailed hawks circling the blue some surveilling currents and visions, others scaling sky and, oh, we've spied 14, hawks number, where we're going, where we've been. Guardians of an earth asunder, they urge, reclaim the long view since seers. Sun slips behind the hills, Sky pinks, burns, streams turquoise. Along the island road, a deer darts beyond our car, pauses at the edge of the wood, in his gaze the mantle of grace. Ears alert, he heard us hunched in the car, assessing likelihoods. Would he leap and lose himself in forest shade, be swallowed by time? Rooted, he weighs the tumbled seconds, joy and awe cascading. Ignition on, we inch ahead while he stays, sniffs the air, attends to the tire's graze. Deep drawling blues, murmur as we fade. Thank you.
Uh, hi, I'm Brenda Clues, and I've had two books of uh, published, um, and the um, bio and everything is going to be in the info below. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, a few poems. Um, none of them have been published, so they're in uh, from uh, various projects in progress. And um, okay, so uh, this is from a long prose poem called Singularity, where a post-apocalyptic imaginary world exists on the edge of a black hole. Rim the edges. The force drags and spumes. A dangerous propulsion. Remain intact. Resist collapse. Ride the quasar bronco. The beast is invisible, insatiable. What falls in fragments in its own density. Live on the blade of roaring light. Do not suckle despair. It drags on the emptiness in each person. Bridal inner accord, cosset contentment. He spun in, how? He was mentally agile, a meditator. He could chill his body or warm it. A master of lucid dreaming, darkness luring, waited nightly to creep in and claim one during sleep. But he guarded his night travels like a sentinel. Did he succumb in a moment of unawareness? Was it a lynching? They lived on a mirage of earth long ago. Phantoms of people who remained. The world emanated from memory. Magnetic waves formed the flux of their bodies, cities of light, mountains, soft plains, and churning oceans. Life half real, a vivid hallucination. The world had ended, but the dream of life continued. And this is from the same manuscript in progress, uh, which is on my brother's death in 2017. It's called Chiffonier. Wedged in by my bed, the cat clawed chest of drawers, my mother's. It's stitched on lattice, stained wild rose. A Spanish Conquistador's hair flew off like a black wig. Coral cherubs rise with tiny rice paper carnations. Green coffee beans spiral up from my cup. Ceiling fan billowing. Morosa's doves eat rice from her fingers in the mirror. Flames cremate while Inca gold falls to the floor. And this is a mirror poem from an unpublished collection called The Un-Narcissist Poems. Mirror portrait number 10. I think of you, meaning me, in shades of dusk and green, stain with imprimatura there, like that, blood oozing from bone, pick claret, cold blood, rivering to the heart, pick cobalt. If the body is duffel with mustard seeds, sienna, punctured cadmium yellow yolk, lime wash of lapis, rosewood, black almond shell, copper, chromium paint, linseed, oiled skin, bone edge nose, jugular hollow, where the neck grows, 
bladed locks of sinewy strokes. Palette scumbled, shingling fossil, sand blue, heather, ash rose, derma a visage of angular, irregular, mob of tawny icebergs, jutting jigsaw, swallowing light, flesh rises. To keep you away, I splash air, rain turpentine. And my final piece is from uh, a longer prose poem called Pull Down the Northern Lights for Chandeliers. These marbles, etched blue, black cores, whites like frost, heavy, tired. The night air, warm for the first time this year. If those I loved in the African village of my childhood were shackled on the ocean, slaves for sale, my burning eyes of granite fury. Noble peoples, the pain and anger of black North America simmers in my soul. You use the same palette of colors to paint black skin or white, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, Venetian red, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, titanium white. In darker skin, add more red, yellow. Lighter skin moves towards the blues, even greens. One set of paints. Dark is darker. Light is lighter, is all. The light source has a bigger effect on skin color than ethnicity. Thank you. I'm Clara Blackwood and I'll be reading six poems from a sequence of poetry called Burying Persephone. And there's six poems for every seed that she ate in the underworld. Burying Persephone, one. She held me captive some 40 years until the can't take break of the psyche, egg white death clamoring for release until I live the patterns beaten and distorted and bored. Where did the equilibrium go? Was it something I never possessed? Assailed by the constant pitter patter of unseen disturbance, like a group of plaths at the bottom of the ocean. To be claimed by a fearful goddess is to hold tension between opposites, to exist in a state of heavy diffuseness, a constant stranger in the day blooming world. And what happens when you reach the end of the descent, when grief, terror, and ego dissolve? How do you bury? the mistress of the dead. Two, I shall hold a vigil, light a seven day candle, plant a seed. None can compare to her underworld allure, a taste of the afterlife. She oversaw every love spell, every magenta wish, how black feathers are brought together. We enacted the changing of seasons, the yielding of reason, intoxicants crown, what took root at the heart of subjugation. Three, Our Lady of the Pomegranates is also Our Lady of Addiction. How could I not resist another surreptitious sip from this green gold chalice? And how could I not resist the artificial paradise as salve for the sutured hearted. Spells and potions, henbane lotions, loose the girders of the flesh. Fly agaric, fully mesmeric, crack the door wide open. Hail oubliette, hail out of this world. I have attained invisibility. 
four, Our Lady of the Pomegranates, Our Lady of Polarity, Our Lady of Abuse, Our Lady of Mortal Entanglements, Our Lady of Brutal Relationships, Our Lady who is half in love with easeful death, Our Lady Sylvia Plath, Our Lady of the Unconscious, Our Lady of Infinite Youth, Our Lady of Intoxication, Our Lady Amy Winehouse, Our Lady Codependency, Our Lady Depth Psychology, Our Lady of Something That Cannot Be Spoken, Our Lady of Conflict Avoidance, Our Lady of Suppressed Nuclear Anger, Our Lady of Spirits, Our Lady of Mediumship, Our Lady of Soft Whips, Our Lady of Large Sensuous Lips, Our Lady of Bright Flashing Eyes, Our Lady of Disguise, Our Lady of Sympathetic Magic, Our Lady of Death in Life, Our Lady of Random Psychic Attacks, Our Lady on the Margin of Margins, Our Lady of Martini Parties, Our Lady of Emotional Distress, Our Lady of Our Lives Have Become Unmanageable, Our Lady of Difficult Boundaries, Our Lady the Healer, Our Lady Florence Nightingale, Our Lady of Introversion, Our Lady of Courage and Despair. Five, let me breathe without you haunting me. I am an old soul with temporal problems, a holy priestess of the infernal realm. My dark red incantations settle the dusk. Do I choose death and the devil or glorious mysteries, Lucifer or Christ? I crossed the threshold three times seeking liberation, saw Crowley in hell, phantoms of the shadow tree, the ashes of angels, and in the afterlife erase me not, nor my knowledge of the secret arts, my Gnostic salvation, my pomegranate heart. Six, she doesn't want me to go threatens I'll lose my dark muse abilities, become a wayfarer in permanent exile, stripped of all power. 20 years in the craft, I've given up magic, drugs, divination. Must I also give you burnt offerings, blood let into an ancient urn for you to release me? Pray I see a golden transcendence when passing through the narrow gate a beauty beyond crimson and black, that first immaculate taste of pomegranate in the underworld. So I'm going to read a few of my newer poems. <laughs> <God. laughs> oh, take two. Yep. So you gotta have a few bloopers in this because it's too fun. <laughs> funny. We should have a guy run in with a chainsaw and just cut my poems in half. <laughs>